Hi guys, 732 Review Crew here. I am Mikey. I'm Joe. And I'm Mike. And we are back with our Patreon viewer picked movie. Now this one is Silence of the Lambs. And just for reference, I have not seen this. Me neither. I don't know how they made a movie about just like a sheep yeah. pasture. And I, I can't believe they've never seen this. And on, I it's don't, actually insane. I kind of know what this is about, but I really don't at the same time. I'm probably wrong with my misconceptions. Uh, yeah, I probably think it's, Let's just say it's good that we all ate prior. Oh, that's nothing about <laughs> my stomach. That's healthcare life for you, but... Um, I don't get it. I'm ready to watch this one. Very thankful for our Patreon viewers for voting on a horror-style movie. We thriller. This is more of a thriller... Mystery, you know. With some really dark moments, for and, sure. And, yeah. um, you know... Thank you for voting on this one. You know, it is springtime, but it doesn't mean that we have to watch, you know, just comedies and all that stuff. I'm, oh, I was happy to watch thrillers and Supernatural and, you know, yeah, those it, type of movies all time long, not just for Halloween, Mom. You need these under your yeah, belt I because do. it's like you have no movie culture whatsoever. So. I don't. <laughs> now, before we start this one, if you do want to have any influence on our movie picks, as well as voting on TV shows and letting us know, what you want, make sure you check out our Patreon, which does have movie polls, but also has a movie um, survey going out right now that will ask basically what kind of movies you want us to watch in the future. Let us know because it does help a long way. But also thank you to our Patreon viewers again for helping support. As you can see, our quality keeps getting better and better. And I'm very excited for this horror movie. I know you guys want to watch me and Mike squirm because we don't know what's about to happen and i'm pretty sure we're going to squirm a little bit in this one i mean this isn't the texas chainsaw massacre or anything no it doesn't have to be oh isn't it just a movie about silent lambs what are we squirming about i don't know let's find out three two one thank you for joining us you're really putting in our face right there do you think he's from the fbi all those guys are massively tall. Or is she just short? Bill skins fell. Wow. Yikes. These skinning people? Skinning murders? Uh, jobs come up and I thought about you. They're not a job really, more of an interesting errand. Sit down. It says <laughs> here, when you graduate, you want to come to work for me in behavioral science. Yes, very much, sir. Very much. You spook easily, Starling. Say the one we want most refuses to cooperate. Who's the subject? The psychiatrist, Hannibal Lecter. Huh. Hannibal the cannibal. Excuse me, sir, but why the urgency? Lecter's been in prison for so many years now. Is there some connection between him and Buffalo Bill, maybe? I wish there were. Huh. And you're to tell him nothing personal, Starling. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. Will you be in Baltimore overnight? Because this can be quite a fun town if you have the right guide. Cringe, bro. I don't believe Lecter has even seen a woman in eight years. Huh. Are you ever his taste? So to speak. Do not touch the glass. Do not approach the glass. You pass him nothing but soft paper. No pencils or pens. No staples or paper clips in his paper. His mouthpiece and restraints were removed for an EKG. When the nurse leaned over him, he did this to her. The doctors managed to reset her jaw, more or less. Save one of her eyes. His pulse never got above 85. Even when he ate her tongue. <gasps> Love the red light. So chaotic. The rumbling foreboding. It's like he's a demon, right? More like she's going into hell. She's a demon. Isn't it so fucked up that they didn't even like escort her? They were just like, yep, yeah, here you go. Have fun. All the way to the end of the hall. May I see your credentials? Certainly. Don't do that. That expires in one week. You're not real an FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the academy. I'm here to learn from you. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. Tell me, what did Miggs say to you? He said, I can smell your cunt. I see. I myself cannot. All that detail just from memory, sir? Memory agent starting is what I have instead of a view. Well, perhaps you'd care to lend us your view on this questionnaire, sir. 
You were doing fine. You had been courteous and receptive to courtesy. Psychologist has a psychologist has an inmate is terrible. Why do you think he removes their skins, Agent Starling? It excites him. Most serial killers keep some sort of trophies from their victims. I didn't. No. No, you ate yours. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? Don't answer. He's reading so well. But are you strong enough to point that high-powered perception at yourself? Why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? Write down. She's afraid. I mean, come on. I oh, yeah. once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Ooh. She's not taking the questionnaire. He didn't fill it out. She's gonna leave it in the box? I bit my wrist. <laughs> How would that have had that happen to you? This courtesy is unspeakably ugly to me. Look, go seek out Miss Moffat, an old patient of mine. M O F E T. Go Doctor. now. I don't think Mix could manage again quite so soon, even though he is crazy. Go now. What is happening? Is it a crazy person jail? You just got cum thrown at her face. Yeah. <laughs> what a wild detail. I don't know if I've seen a movie like that. I would throw up if I was her. Hey, Clarice. Oh, man. Did you get any bad guys today, Daddy? No, Angel, they all got away. Daddy. Her dad wasn't a coal miner. Got it. Behind your back. Thumbs up. You're dead, Starling. Starling, where's your danger area? In the corner, sir. Did you check the corner? No, sir. That's the reason you're dead. Uh, rule 404. Miggs is dead. The orderly heard Lecter whispering to him all afternoon, and Miggs crying. They found oh, wow. Him. He'd swallowed his own tongue. Oh, wow. Lecter did it for her. Yeah. It's a contract. It's in the name of a. Miss Hester Moffat. So nobody's been in here since 1980? Oh, oh man. <clears throat> what could possibly be in there? Is that a hearse? Yep. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Eee. Is that Miss Moffat? With a mustache? It's an anagram, isn't it, Doctor? Miss the rest of me, meaning that you rented that garage? What's in the washcloth? Thank you. You're bleeding is that? How the fuck? Dr. Lecter, whose head is in that bottle? His real name is Benjamin Raspell, a former patient of mine whose romantic attachments ran to, shall we say, the exotic. I did not kill him, I assure you, merely tucked him away very much as I found him after he'd missed three appointments. Raspell was a transvestite? In life? Oh no, a fledgling killer's first yeah. effort at transformation. Do you think Jack Crawford Wants you sexually. That doesn't interest me, Doctor. Frankly, it's it's the sort of thing that Miggs would say. How does he control the lights? Thank you, Barney. Oh, okay, never mind. Thank you, Barney. What I want is a view. I want a window where I can see a tree or even water. I want to be in a federal institution far away from Dr. Children. I'm offering you a psychological profile of Buffalo Bill based on the case evidence. You know who he is, don't you? You're the one who killed the first the guy? Who decapitated yeah. Doctor. All good things to those who wait. 
Our little Billy must already be searching for that next special lady. God, they, now I see why this won five awards. The acting from just Lecter alone is Anthony crazy. Hopkins is known to be goaded for this role, and he's nailing it. He's got night vision. Shouldn't he be blinded right now? Blue eyes. Why is he carrying the cash like that? Can I help you with that? Uh, get in a truck and I want to push it all the way up. I really Oh no. Why would you get in the truck, lady? Hey, are you about a size 14? Sorry. Bruh. That's why his hands all messed up. What the fuck is going on? Oh, no! She had a cat! It's not gonna get fed! Okay, three days. Uh. He jumps them, skins them, and dumps them. That's Frederica Bimmel, the first one. Her body was the only one he took the trouble to weight down, so actually she was the third girl found. After her, he got lazy. If I'd sent you in there with an actual agenda, Lecter would have known it instantly. He would have toyed with you, then turned to stone. Once again, in a room full of men, if you're noticing. They're all staring at her, sizing her up. And they're all huge in comparison to her. What's this trauma she's reliving? Oh. Right. Vaseline? For the smell of a river body? Uh, or maybe it's cocaine, who knows? No, it's, 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 it's cream. We do this in healthcare to get... Two of her fingernails are broken off and there's... Uh, there's dirt or grit under them. It looks like she's tried to claw her way through something. She's got something in her throat. Oh God, what's gonna be in there? What's gonna be in there? Guesses, guesses? What do you use to kill her? <laughs> Ew. That's a bug cocoon. But there's no way that could get way down in there like that. Unless somebody shoved it in there. The victim's skin yeah. removed at this time in two large diamond-shaped sections above the buttocks. I like have to remember to reset my face because it's just like stuck in an expression of bewilderment. It's still my turn. She got bug friends? Nice and slow, baby. You mean this is like a clue from a real Ooh, murder case? Cool. Oh. Just ignore him. He's not a PhD. <laughs> Hitting on me, Doc? Yes. Everybody hits on her. Agent Starling, meet Mr. Acarantia Sticks. Oh, Death Head Beetle thingy. Better known to his friends as the Death's Head Moth. Yeah. Look at all these memes I'm learning. In this country, they'd have to be specially raised from imported eggs. Uh, somebody grew this guy, fed him honey and nightshade, kept him warm. Somebody loved him. Hey, you guys know any people who like bugs? Bug apartment. Pretty cool. Got a good setup. I hate insects. I love them. <laughs> Getting a little itchy looking at that room. I think is it. I will let a spider loose in your house. <laughs> Mikey got me. <laughs> oh. <gasps> Suddenly the first victim makes more sense. I think I know where this is going. I don't want to spoil it for Mikey. I think I know too. Yep. I'm curious. How, how, how does that make the, the first victim make more sense? He turned the first victim into a transvestite instead of himself. Young Catherine Martin, as we've said, is the only daughter of U.S. Senator Ruth Martin, the Republican junior senator from Tennessee. Yikes. Catherine is very gentle and kind. Talk to her and you'll see. Fucked. Jesus, that's really smart. Anywhere she keeps repeating the name. I promise you. He sees Catherine as a person and not just an object. It's harder to tear her up. What you're doing, Miss Starling, is coming into my hospital to conduct an interview and refusing to share information with me for the third time. He is, is my patient. I have rights. I have rights. <laughs> this is the number for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Please, either you discuss this with him or you let me do my job. <laughs> Ah. Senator promises you a transfer. 
to the VA hospital at Oneida Park, New York, with a view of the woods nearby. Maximum security still applies. One week of the year, you get to leave the hospital. Every day of that week, you may and walk on the beach. You may oh. swim in the ocean for up to one hour under SWAT team surveillance, of course. I bet. And there you have it. That's a good deal. It's an amazing deal. He ate people. If I help you, Clarice, it will be turns with us too. Quid pro quo. I tell you things, you tell me things. Not about this case, though. About yourself. <laughs> what is your worst memory of childhood? Death of my father. One night he surprised two uh... workers coming out of the back of a drugstore. They shot him. Very strong. He lasted more than a month. My uh -huh. father had become the whole world to me. When he left me, I had nothing. I broke a, she broke a rule. So tell me about Mr. Fuck the rules. She's not supposed to touch the glass. A large girl. Size 12. Yes. 14. Ladies for the hips. Romy. They all were. She had an object deliberately inserted into her throat. Was it a butterfly? Just like the one we found in Benjamin Raspail's head an hour ago. Oh. Why does he place them there, Doctor? The He's significance of the moth is changed. Metamorphosis. Our oh. belly wants to change, too. Yeah. You're so close to the way you're going to catch him. Do you realize that? After your father's murder, you were often... <laughs> <laughs> He's so good at this. Fucker. I ran away. Why, Clarice? Did the rancher make you perform fellatio? Did he sodomize you? No. He was a very decent man. Good. Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. There are three major centers for transsexual surgery. Johns Hopkins, the University of Minnesota, and Columbus Medical Center. I wouldn't be surprised if Billy had applied for sex reassignment at one or all of them and been rejected. Look for severe childhood disturbances associated with violence. Our Billy wasn't born a criminal, Clarice. He was made one through years of systematic abuse. It rubs the lotion on its skin and does this whenever it's told. It. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I didn't know the dog was part of the meme. Put the fucking lotion in the basket! I should try to climb out? Oh my god. If not her, someone else. Now. Hey, look! Oh, she didn't realize she was in Buffalo Bill's basement. Well, there's also, it's dark down there and the basket had a light on. Right. I called Senator Ruth Martin. She never heard of any deal with you. They scammed you. What the fuck is going on? <gasps> no. And if the girl is found in time, Senator Martin will have you transferred to Brushy Mountain State Prison in Tennessee. Who is Buffalo Bill? His first name is Lewis. Much of the rest of the senator himself, but only in Tennessee. And I have a few conditions of my own. Does he have the pen in his hands? How would he get it in his hands? I don't know. How do you change clothes? Now we're gonna treat you as good as you treat us. You be a gentleman, you're gonna get three hot staccato. Ah. Ha ha ha! He get it, dude. He had to change his clothes. Is he gonna escape? Let me help you now, and I will trust you when it is all over. You have my word, Paul. He's playing them too. Buffalo Bill's real name is Lewis Friend. I met him just once. He was referred to me in April or May 1980. He doesn't forget things. Benjamin Raspel. Ah. They were lovers, you see. Ah. Apparently, Lewis had. Murdered a transient and done things with the skin. Did you nurse Catherine yourself? Toughened your nipples, didn't it? Oh, son of a bitch. Amputate a man's leg and he can still feel it tickling. Tell me, Mom, when your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? Take this thing back to Baltimore. Five for ten, strongly built, about 180 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes pale blue. Love your suit. 
this evening with Senator Ruth Martin, Dr. Lecter, agrees to assist in the investigation of trying to find the abductor of Catherine Martin, Buffalo Bill. How do you feel, sir? Well, it's only through my own unique insight into Lecter's mind that this breakthrough was possible. And Buffalo Bill's real name? Buffalo Bill's real name is now a matter of record with the proper authorities. Can you give us My name is Dr. Frederick Chilton. How do you spell that? C-H. What? It's in the paper. Interesting, Sal. So we can see the art. I don't know what the fuck is happening, Mikey. Looks like he got an upgrade, huh? Got yeah. a rug, dude. I thought you might like your drawings back, Doctor. Lewis friend. Iron sulfide, also known as, as fool's gold. Everything you need to find him is right there in those pages. It kills women. No, that is incidental. Gins them. He covets. And how do we begin to covet, Clary? We begin by coveting what we see every day. Don't you feel eyes moving over your body, Clary? Why did you leave that ranch? Later, now please listen to me. We've only got five. No, I will listen now. I heard a strange noise. What was it? Some kind of screaming, like a child's boy. I was so scared to look inside, but I had to. Lambs. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lamb. And they were screaming. First I tried to free them. I, I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. They just stood there. Lambs to the slaughter. They wouldn't run. I took one lamb and I ran away as fast as I could. It was so heavy. I didn't get more than a few miles when the sheriff's car picked me up. The rancher was so angry, he sent me to live at the Lutheran Orphanage and Postman. You still wake up sometimes, don't you? Wake up in the dark. And hear the screaming of the lamb. Do you think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lamb? But this man doesn't blink. Dude, facts. You will let me know when those lambs stop screaming, won't you? Tell me his name, Doctor. Uh oh. <gasps> Did he write it in there? Goodbye, Harry. Because he has a pen. Did he write it in there? He had to have written it in there. <laughs> Is it an anagram? I have so many questions. Ah! Give me the case file. <laughs> I want to look at it myself. And it is a movie about lambs. I know it. <laughs> I never saw that part. <laughs> no, it was a story about lambs. <laughs> it's still about the lambs. Lambs to the slaughter. Bro, they're literally going to make every dude look at her. It's wild. Yeah, that guy didn't look. That guy's not looking. Oh, he's drawing her now, isn't he? The lamb. Like, Jesus. How fucked up is that, though? Son of a bitch demanded a second dinner. Lamb chops. Extra rare. Oh. <laughs> Where's he been keeping that this whole time? Okay, Doc. Grab some flora. Same drill as before, please. Mm hmm I feel like they should check his hands as okay. standard procedure. I was thinking that. Well, something tells me they're gonna have an event that makes him learn that. Oh man, his neck is so close. Uh oh. Jimmy, watch it, he's got this Oh. Oh! He's not escaping. Ready when you are, Sergeant Pembry. I think he is eating them. Well, the other guy was attempting to crawl Holy away. Shit. Holy shit. The hell? Bitch. Shut up. See you off a 10 block radius. Give me the SWAT team and an ambulance double quick. This is the smartest dude I've ever seen yeah. in a movie like this. Yeah. And they got bulletproof vests on too now. You see that? What the fuck? He hung him up. With angel wings? Oh. Wow. Somehow, Cut him open. Somehow that's worse. That's Argentina. fucking Lecter. He's alive. Get a hold you take the face off of somebody? Talk to him. And they're gonna get him out in the ambulance, dude. He's home free if he gets out like that. That's Lecter. That's Lecter. We're gonna explain why he took the pocket knife. We think he's on too. <laughs> He's on top of the thing. Unless the corpse is up there. Yeah. Pembry's up there. 
And we have faceless corpse. He swapped the clothes. He's so fucking smart. On the leg. <sighs> He's already dead. Yeah, the face is missing. Pressure is 130 over 90. 90. Yeah, that's right, 90. Uh, pulsing, the uh, patient is on 10 liters of oxygen. Well done, Mikey. Well done. I'm glad you guys didn't miss that. He won't come after me. Oh, really? He won't. He would consider that rude. Desperately random. Yeah, but there is no pattern, and the computers would have nailed it. Random because of the one girl. The one he weighed it down. How do we first start to covet? We covet what we see. Does he work with them? You know, society started falling apart when people stopped owning music boxes. It's just your opinion, man. <laughs> Ooh. All that music in the background. I know how creepy. What? The fuck? Pictures that he he took, right? Who took? Come on, Cat, be an arc. Huh. He's making himself a woman's suit, Mr. Crawford, out of real women. And he, and he can sew, this guy. He's, he's very skilled. Like, That's why they're all so big. He has to keep them alive so he can starve them a while, so that he can loosen their Starling, skin and take... Starling, Starling, we know who he is and where he is. We're on our way right now. Subject's name is Jamie Gum, a.k.a. John Grant. We wouldn't have found him without you. Nobody's going to forget that. At least about me. <sighs> oh, I know this scene. It's the only scene from the movie I know. A lot of pop culture references as well. Jesus. Precious. <gasps> Come on, girl. Is she gonna kidnap the dog? I feel like it's not gonna go well. Who do you fuck me? Come on, take that bone. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I don't like it here anymore. Sewing was her life. Did you two ever work together? Oh, Sewing club. Or store supplies. Oh. <laughs> She's in a lot of pain, mister. She needs a bed. <laughs> <laughs> the classic FBI. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you hurt my dog! Don't you make me hurt your dog! Hey, you don't know what pain is! The big gun. Oh, it actually is his house. Good afternoon. <gasps> um, sorry. It's the me. wrong house. I'm looking for Mrs. Lippman's family. Clarice. Your name is? Oh, uh, Jack Gordon. Mr. Gordon. Was she a great big fat person? Yeah, she was a big girl, sir. Mrs. Lippman had a son, though. Maybe he could help you. I got, I got his card in here someplace. Do you want to come in while I look for it? May I? Yes. Yeah, sure. Is Hannibal going to come to her rescue? I hope so. Good pro quo. She's not dumb. Say, has the FBI learned something? The police around here don't seem to have the first clue. She knows. Fingerprints and like that. Pumping it for information too right now. She did just <laughs> smart girl. Bro, clean your pants. Freeze! Put your hands over your head and turn around. Spread your legs. She's so smart. Spread your legs. Put your hands in the back. Thumbs up. Freeze! Fuck. Don't you wish she had just shot right then? Yeah. The screaming lambs. Oh, look at reference. FBI, you're safe. <laughs> On the skin suit. Of course, there's some neo Nazi memorabilia in there. I thought I saw the swastikas on like the, the quilt before. Do you notice that? God, dude, God. Tension's so high. Doesn't help that it's a fucking maze. Who the fuck? Oh, is that the. That's mine. Oh, 
Shoot wildly. Gunpowder going off will let you see. Go! Shoot! Oh yeah. Yes! There's, there's that training. I just want to do one more, please. Oh man, God, that release attention, huh? Fucking crazy. There's still a serial killer on the loose, sir. A smarter one. Graduating class day. Congratulations. She graduates with a serial killer case already under her belt, dude. She should probably go to a therapist, though. What do you mean? She got one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was good. That was. I'll be visiting soon, probably. Right. Special agent man. Phone call. It, oh, fuck. It's Hannibal saying congratulations. Congratulations, special agent. Have the lamb stopped screaming? Dr. Lander. Don't bother with the trace. I won't be on long enough. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. <laughs> Very important. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. You know what? That's, you know what? Sure, yeah. He deserves to eat him. But that was very good. It's almost like it's a classic or something. For a good reason. You need a like button. <laughs> like. Like you guys should when you're watching this video. Oh, well played. Once again, Mikey. I think that was the worst one you've ever done. <laughs> yeah, my, my I don't know how to tell if it's over. Cause yeah, see, okay. Paul is ours pilcher. You didn't know that? I don't think there's anything. I hope Paul Lazar watches our channel and goes, thanks, Mike. I'm glad someone recognized me. I hope so, too. Yeah, Sounds like so a too. nice team. Now, to get into this movie discussion, this was a great thriller movie in the sense that the entire time, especially once we did you had Lecter into discussions, there was just an all time high because it felt like one of those shows where at any moment, he could have reached through and grabbed her, even though the glass was there, you know? Which is what builds attention. It's like the TV show Shogun we're watching, where it feels like, even though, you know, sometimes not that much is happening, they're just having a conversation. Mike, I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. You can't compare the two. This, uh, is, yeah. this I, is masterpiece. I also, oh, this is great. I, I, I like that you said it was like he almost could reach through the screen and grab her, yeah. right? But he did. Like, he mentally, did. Mentally. Yes, mentally, yeah. he did. He made a crazy person commit suicide by talking to him. <laughs> well, we have, to, we have to know, the worst so, type of patient is a psychiatrist, because, as you could see, the worst type of, I'm sorry, uh, prisoner is a psychiatrist, not patient, because, as you could see, the worst patient is they're going to profile everybody, and if they're good enough like him, they can go down to your roots and then turn you into an ally, even though you're not supposed to even say anything about yourself. Well, something funny about him, though, is his entire diagnosis of her on their initial meeting was completely wrong. Like, every single part is wrong. But do you think that was on purpose? It was, it was on or purpose. Or do you think that he just misjudged well, her? Part of that... I don't think he misjudged her. I think that's part of his skill as a psychiatrist. Yes, is, because what does he get by the end of it? If he, says, he gets what he wants. Yes. If, he, so. if he goes in confidently and says the wrong things, she's going to be like, okay, he's not as bad as everybody says because, you know, he's not, he's, not, he's not as smart as people think in that sense. You know, not, I don't think she ever misunderestimated him ever. Well, no, I, I, I don't it, think... It lowers the guard. She did break protocol, though. Yeah, she she broke, did. She yeah. absolutely broke so protocol. What I'm trying to say is because she did that, because he was wrong... She felt a little bit more at ease in the sense because she was like, oh, he doesn't know everything about me like everybody was kind of saying. So therefore, if I have a conversation with him, there's no way he can control me because maybe he's not as scary as originally made. She knew to keep her guard up for certain reasons. She knew that he... I think she was afraid of him. She was, but she wasn't... I feel like him lying, be, being wrong about that was kind of allowed her to bring her guard down a little bit because it was kind of one of those moments where she was like, she felt less vulnerable because she was wrong and more able to be in control. But then as we show, as he, she, he showed with the quid pro quo thing, um, he will direct the conversation in any way he wants. Well, it's also, it, it's, it's an encapsulation of the idea of like the best way to get an answer on the internet is to post the wrong answer, not to ask the question. Yeah. So him postulating incorrectly uh, allowed yes. her to come out and be like, 
Are you dumb? It's like human yeah. nature to want to... It's almost like a psychiatrist would know that. And I, yes, love how yeah. he, I love how he knows if they're lying or not because he's a psychiatrist. You know, he, he knows how to... Well, that's... He didn't know. That's not for... He what, didn't know. Well, part of it is when you're a psychiatrist, uh, you know, part of the training is to look into people's tells. He didn't sure. know that she lied about the vacation because he even asked her, he's like, Antox Island, your idea? And she's like, yep. Well, that's what yeah. all, all the paperwork kind of made it real. Seem real. Yeah, no, but, but he is, But her delivery is what he made it real. He specifically said, I'll know if you're lying. And I think he does know when she's lying. I think he knew exactly what was happening. I think he's playing with her because he's part of what, you know, he's bored in jail part of it too. And what I want to know is did he mm-hmm. know somehow that the prison warden would get insecure? About her, and that's yes. why he played along. Yes. But how would he know? Because he knows the we prison, don't get that detail. Because he knows the prison warden is a power complex gentleman. And he's known him for the eight years yeah. he's been staying. And, there. and as, a, as a psychiatrist, he's had eight years to psychoanalyze him it, from their interactions. And then we see it. We see that because off who actually don't see that. who actually got him out? The, the prison. No, I'm warden. sorry, not Clarice. The, the warden. Yes. The yeah. warden. Uh, Dr. Chilton. Yes, Dr. Dr. Chilton. Yes. Now the whole, the is whole... the reason he is. And Dr. Chilton only did that because he was offering stuff to her and he was like, absolutely. Fuck not. It's my prison. You're my prisoner. Well, Dr. We, 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 well she was so eager to to take the fame and here like remember there it's the press conference and he's like saying his name, blah, blah, blah. Well, they showed us that Dr. Chilton has power complex. In the situation, the second or th- was it the third time she returns, and he's like, yeah. he's like, what's going on? And that is the you know he has to you know stick his nose in everything because it's his patient in his facility, and she's like, mm, no, and it just goes to show that he as a patient would be diagnosed as a control freak because he needs to have control over everything, but also it's you know he wants the fame and fortune that comes along with being part of something involving a mass prolific serial killer. Especially one as deranged like this. It's all he's got. Remember what it's they, all he's got. They mentioned I mean, it in the beginning. They said that he's a research subject. Yes. That, that he is the, the greatest research subject for psychology ever. He actually said specifically that he was, what did he refer to Hannibal as to him? The whole, not the Holy Ghost. Most, pro, most precious asset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Asset. Or I think he said his, like, I, prize he possession, said prize possession, like Holy Grail, yeah. whatever. Now, but it was like, it, yes. I want you to reference this. The same way that... Remember how they say the big easiest way to, you know, dehumanize someone in this movie, they did the opposite, you know, by saying the name of the girl that was to make her think it's a person, not an yeah, object. And then, therefore, it'll delay Buffalo. But the no. prison, the prison, uh, Dr. Chilton referred to him kind of as an object. So, yes, exactly. So you didn't think of him as a person. So Dr. Chilton didn't view him as a person. He viewed him as the most valuable mm. research. Oh, OK, person. good, good. And now want you to point out that Buffalo Bill was referring to the girl as it. It puts the lotion yes, on the skin. But the yeah. dog, he didn't refer to as it. So he had his emotional, he's obviously has some sort of emotional trauma. We'll get to that. Uh, it stunts his, you know, belief. He has a connection with the dog, therefore, you know, whatever. But the girls to him were just literally sheets of fabric that yes. he was. And once again, it's the everyday sociopaths that are the real villains. I don't know. I, this one, I feel like the real. So I feel um, like that the not everyday sociopaths, but the real. So <laughs> throughout the movie, you guys notice multiple times with <clears throat> her, the the agent, that most of the men she interacts with either don't take her seriously or covet her, or or yes, sure, covet her. Covet her. Did, but I want to point out, there's one particular person throughout the entire movie who never does that and only shows her respect. And it's the FBI guy. Yes. Well, even, even at the end, he. Well, though they ask if he did. Did they ask if he was if he thought of her that way? Buffalo Bill. I'm sorry. No. Like, Hannibal actually again, gave her just, respect as well. Yeah. Hannibal did give her respect. Yes. Fair. The only but, two men in her life are the boss and Hannibal who gave her respect. Sure. Yes. And Hannibal technically also at the end says like, "Hey, don't try to fuck this up for me. I'm not coming after you." So do me the favor, since I'm not coming after you, just leave me be. And she's like, I don't know if I can do that. No. <laughs> you know, she's like, ta ta, I have dinner with a, a friend. But I, I just wanted to point out that that was really, I think, important because clearly at this point in time and the FBI, 
It's not very easy for her to break past all of the men the good old boys around boys. her, including like when he realized his only misstep, her boss, is telling the sheriff like, hey, no, let's talk in the other room to discuss Buffalo Bill. So Buffalo Bill, was he actually a patient of I think he, well, he was no. actually, he wasn't actually a patient of Hannibal's. No, he he well. All we, the only information we have is from Hannibal. But Hannibal said it was his patient who she found the, the head of. Hey, that was his patient. The, the disembodied, just the head in the jar, was his patient. Buffalo Bill was that patient's boyfriend. Hannibal Lecter said he didn't kill that patient, though. He, he said that, that, that I didn't kill that guy. Yes. So Buffalo Bill killed that guy and used his projection. Maybe, like I said in the beginning, maybe he used him as his first attempt to, you know, beautify someone or... That's exactly what Hannibal said. Like, Buffalo Bill is the setting. The story is about Hannibal Lecter and, I know. Yeah. and the FBI. I know. about Buffalo Bill, though, because Buffalo Bill is also a big driving point for So everything. think about this, then, Mikey. So if, if his patient was the boyfriend, yeah. the, boy, the boyfriend tells Hannibal about Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Long story short, his patient's dead, but he has his head in a jar. I think you're going to have to take the extra step for Mikey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So possibly Hannibal Lecter and Buffalo Bill knew each other a little bit better than Hannibal saying, oh, we only met that one time. I don't know. I don't, I don't, because I don't, I don't, Hannibal at the, the first time. The first time she they meet and and she tells him he she found the head, he says like it was their first time, like trying to kill someone. Hannibal says that. All right, he says like oh it like it was the poor attempt at some his first time. Blah blah blah. So they never outright say it, but you can come to the conclusion that Hannibal may know or have known. Him a little bit better than he was uh, letting on. I don't know if I'm still sold on that. Then think, how do you have? I think head? that's fair. So you're saying that's instead not, that was, Hannibal killed him? That was no. Hannibal's locker. Hannibal said that he that literally locker. found him after he missed three appointments. Yeah, he missed three appointments, and then they found the head. And as you know, a human body after three weeks will have a perfectly preserved head you can put in a pickle jar. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> I'm just my I'm, theory I'm is just saying this was. Buffalo Bill's first soiree and killing, dissecting and whatnot. Hannibal is a completely different being. And I think, it, I, you know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I haven't seen the other ones. It's my first time watching. So Hannibal is a completely different being who just happened to be related based on a patient, you know, relation. And maybe he was able to deduct what was going on or maybe be able to figure it out because based on one being a serial killer and two being a psychologist. Sure. Now, the entire thing is that Buffalo Bill had some sort of traumatic event or something go on, and now he wants to be a transvestite in the sense, but also at the same time has Nazi memorabilia slash like neo-Nazi stuff. So it's he's obviously a very damaged individual yes. in the sense that he it believes in neo-Nazi ideology while also being, you know, a murderer or psychopath killer who makes female you know, skin suits so that he can feel like a pretty girl, which is the opposite of neo-Nazi well, thoughts. Because they, they would they'd probably kill him, you know, that is the big thing. So they, Hannibal said he's not a transvestite, though. He's he, not. The mind is, though. No, no, no. He said that he just doesn't know his... He doesn't have an identity, well, is what Hannibal so he, so said. Basically what they're saying... So it's just a culmination, he's so he's trying to make... An identity. Yes. Yes. Now, was that his mom in the bathtub that he killed? I'm feeling like if it wasn't his mom or the was, owner of the property. Yeah, it was whoever she went knocking for. Yeah. Which was the, M Miss Lampert? Something like yeah. that. Now, what something was the relation like in terms of the sewing club stuff? What do you mean, Mike? Like they said that the woman was an avid sewer. Um, yeah. The first girl who died. Okay. Now, it had me thinking that. Mikey, he made dresses too. No, Not just out of human skin. He, of course, he went no, to a sewing club. What I'm saying is, it made me feel like Buffalo Bill knew them based on prior engagements because he what did. Hannibal he Lecter did. said. He did what, that. What I want to know is how he knew them, whether it was through his job or by just, you know, the sewing, sewing club. club. 
but they never were clear about that. They just kind of. She know. even they, sure. the dad even said she loved sewage. Sure, it's sure. Multiple, it's this murder was across multiple states. Is why I'm saying that. Sure, and they didn't the say that the sewing club one. had a correlation between the other murders. Like, yeah, just it just one. happened to be the correlation with the first murder. Like, Correct. There's Ohio, Tennessee, and blah blah, blah across the, the countries. Hey, you're going shopping for fabric. You go yeah. across the state lines if you're well, into okay. it. How does he know these girls in other states that he? Hey, it's opportunity. Well, it no. was he literally baited her. No, he said it was Hannibal Lecter, and said it was based on coveting them. So yes. he had to know them. He had to see them every day and decide that this was the one that I wanted. Sure, and they don't really delve into that other than the single. Ultimately, then why did that last girl not recognize? But I think him? you're just looking at it. The only reason they even give you that TV. information in the his daughter. Maybe he saw her on TV. We didn't see he had a, a but, TV but, in his house. But we don't need to know how that happened. The whole point of Hannibal saying the coveting thing, Monkey, is just so ultimately the detect the agent mm -hmm. can follow those breadcrumbs to just kind of stuff. It's not like she had this massive breakthrough and was like, oh, fuck, I found him. She was literally just tracking right. down every possible lead. And she stumbled and upon just him. so happened to stumble upon him and what actually gave it away that it was him. Was what gave him away was specifically it was a moth. There's a moth. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, now the the one thing I like to think about is the, the metamorphosis thing. So when, interestingly enough, you know when a, a caterpillar is made into a moth, well, it knows what it wants to do. It knows what it has to do to transform and whatnot. Buffalo Bill, on the other hand, does not know what he has to do or what he wants to do to transform. So you can't fully say that he's like a caterpillar with the moth. Because he's stuck in metamorphosis. That's great. I which, totally which, agree. Which is just like the bugs he puts in their throats that are dead. They can never fully go through the metamorphosis and become what they want. Similar to Buffalo Bill not being able to go through the metamorphosis and come what he wants. Yeah, because that's, he does not know what he wants. I totally... Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Now, let me really fuck with your mind. So then, what is the title of the movie about the science of the lambs is trying to silence the screaming of the baby lambs in, in, in the her other her. metamorphosis was her becoming a you know, yes but, yeah but did she really silence the lambs by finishing doing this you know yeah that's, i mean that's why we see a happy ending i don't know if it was really happy i mean she, dr chilton kind of yeah she graduated and became an fbi agent and I told her that her dad would be proud so the entire bit of science yeah. lambs is the protection of innocence it sounds like is a type of thing because those lambs are baby sheep obviously yes and they're protected they're unable to save themselves and even when she opened the gate to say please go run they did not so she had to do it herself and now, even then she failed to save that correct. land whereas what did she succeed she saved catherine yes okay. now the one thing that the, or the lamb from the slaughter if you one, really want to look at it that one way. thing I, one or two things i want to bring up well they, they intertwine with each other so as we have watched one other horror movie the jeepers creepers in this it gave me similar vibes in the beginning in the it's sense not a horror though I'll, I'll let you let me finish i'll tell you okay. it gave me similar vibes in the sense that when we first started this movie we thought like just like jeepers creepers we thought instead of a supernatural being it's just a really fucked up human doing really fucked up things to innocent people which in my opinion, will always be more scary than a supernatural monster being doing things. Because yeah, right. in this, we are given two people, Buffalo Bill and Hannibal Lecter, one a cannibal, one a sadist who wants to literally make bodies into art for himself, whatever. And they both are totally feasible human beings that could exist in this world today. Whereas when we watch other movies that have creatures that are like super powered, you know, underworld monsters, it kind of removes a sense of tension and belief because you're like, oh my God, this could happen. And then you get to the monsters and you're like, never mind, it can't happen. It's monsters. But when we're watching this and he, for example, is, you know, has the thing to get out with the handcuffs, we're like, oh, fuck, he can get out. He's so smart. He's a psychologist. This is so fucking scary. He literally, you know, handcuffs the guy and bites the other guy's lip off. And, you know, that is all something that's all within a human's ability. So when I watch a movie or a TV show that has things that are feasible, it gives me more tension, more you know, fear than when I watch something like I said with Supernatural. And just watching, for example, a human being slice another human being open and hang him up like an angel, almost like Jesus on the cross, Looks and like then cut it. off the other guy's face and wear it. Yes, and escape. It's the clothes yeah. and everything. It's crazy. And then even to go as far as you know, literally following somebody out of the country to eat them because 
you know what is what is it revenge? He didn't even follow. He went ahead and waited. Well, revenge is a but what? He's Actually, definitely like, been coveting killing him, especially with the Chianti. Is it Chianti? Chilton. No, the, Doctor Chilton. The wine. The oh, the Chianti. Chianti. Yeah, you know, with some fava beans, some Chianti. You know, we might see that. You might do that. I feel like he would savor that. Um, yeah, no, I agree. And. You know, now I kind of want to watch the other ones because he's very, you know, the, the actor himself, between the two of them in terms of Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, they are both crazy. And, and I didn't. She's so good. I didn't realize that Anthony Hopkins is Thor's dad in, you know, the Marvel movies, which is funny to me because, you know, that's such a wholesome role for him to he play. He was Hannibal. Now he's yeah. Thor's dad. And now he's. I'm sorry. That's not Hannibal, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's very funny to watch him in a Marvel movie, which, you know, at most is PG 13, and then you see him as a psychopathic murderer is you know just a great swaying of power because i thought he looked familiar and i was like i don't know and then he the way he played hannibal is obviously him carrying this movie and then the fear in jodie foster's face in certain scenes and the way she did it they were both just honestly hey, top notch in this movie and her bravery and fi i really like the last scene because she's clearly being so brave but she's also super scared the entire time which makes it so fucking they real. do a like and i don't know why this one awards besides the fact that it deserves them but like they do such an amazing job at at award, sculpting these scenes with the body language and how everyone interacts based off of that it's insane because like you could even when she confidently like tossed in that deal in the prison cell like he saw that and reacted to it and there's just every scene with like how he was just relaxed always he was always felt like he was in control because he was in control he wasn't in a different prison he was on his way out and it was super relaxed about it and she through the entire ups and downs of it was very open with her body language which was weird to me since everyone warned her like hey like he's going to read the fuck out of you like keep it close to the chest and meanwhile she's like full emotions and like full body language like she's she's not hiding it and i think he might have appreciated that because it gave him uh, it's, it's like a treat, right? Because he's been he's been around all these guarded people, limited inter interactions. He's had no chance to psychoanalyze this whole time, and she's, and she's an, an open, open book. She's a feast for him. So, well, but, quite literally, an open not, book. Not, which, when we first <laughs> meet him, is something he wants desperately, right? Like more than anything, and so, they won't give it to him. Exactly. So he's getting so, his open book. The reason why Hannibal Lecter knew that who Buffalo Bill was was because of his the um. The, the moth in the mouth. That was the calling card of him. So he was able to piece together the fact that the husband, that they were dating, you know, that he was dating his patient and killed him. And then the same calling card was found a few years later with the moth in the mouth again. So he was able to deduce it. That, that's how he knew. They never had an interaction together. I'm pretty sure Buffalo Bill and... Um, did you Google that? Yeah, did you just Google that? No, I was thinking about that. But while I was looking that up, I was looking up... What awards he was thinking won. about it, but he looked it up. No, I, was, <laughs> I was looking up what awards that we won in the movie. Um, but I, I, going back to what you were saying, I think it was really great. The imagery the whole money. time, like again, her stepping into the elevator with all the guys, her get in the funeral wow. home surrounded by all the yeah. guys. You know what I mean? Like I, I just think they do a lot of heavy imagery throughout the movie. Where again, and Jodie Foster crushes it because she's this very petite woman, and she's such a big character beyond her small figure. So you know, which is. Which is really uh, seventeen million dollar budget. Sorry, nineteen million dollar budget and made two hundred seventy million dollars. The movie run did because I feel like they've sold like millions of DVDs. Yes, sure. Yeah, I'm, 100%. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I don't know how often they update that kind of stuff. Because, I feel like it's yeah. just box office. So one of the reasons why also that it did so well in the box office is because around this time horror slash thriller movies and drama slash whatnot was all featured by boogeymen for example jeepers creepers and things like that monsters and you know creatures whereas when you give somebody like Hannibal Lecter, human you element. give them a human element of an intelligent you know psycho somebody who's able to be you know intelligent and psychoanalyze others it gives you more fear it's like jaws you know when you go see jaws when you were if people went to go see jaws in theaters you know when you went to the beach that year you're sitting there thinking like oh my god this could happen you could die from a shark you could die from a shark but when you watch mars attached you're not gonna be like oh the martians are coming you know, you might, yeah. but like, you know, you're more likely yeah. to be afraid of going swimming than being afraid of, you know, aliens from watching another movie. Sure. So this, you know, obviously 
this drives a fear up, but also people may were being afraid of, you know, copycats in terms of, you know, you watch a movie, you become obsessed with it. That's how people do things, Joe, in media. You know, you read Catcher in the Rye and all of a sudden you want to murder celebrities. That's 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 a real thing, you know, copycats people inspired by it. I now understand why this movie is in film classes as like part of the learning now. I'm looking up I'm actually glad we watched it. I'm trying yeah, to I'm surprised you guys have never seen it. Just because it's in so much pull hey, like it's just family guy thing. family guy basically covered the entire movie uh family guy yeah, south did. park i'm sure the same south park has numerous american dad yeah um uh it, i'm looking right now i feel like every show has parodied i'd fuck me <laughs> like it's just it's it's every show what it was the third and most recent film to win academy awards in all five major categories best picture best director best actor best actress and best adapted screenplay because it was a book and it's the only horror film to win best picture I fucking believe it. It's cited as one of the greatest, most influential. It's ranked 48 out of 500. It's in the Congress of Library, Library of Congress, along with the sequels, I think. Um, and Le Starling and Lecter are the greatest, hero one of the greatest heroines and villains in film history. So it makes sense because, I mean, there's not. I also love that her change. name is Starling. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know the it's icon. It's so symbolic. I, that's. I, yeah, that's what I was gonna get at. The, Sorry, there's the nothing in the iconography. I, I I can't say the one. This is one of the. But yeah, the calling her Starling has like this giant like. Well, because she's like up. just learning to fly, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, and uh, this is one of those movies, you know, like, that I would watch and iconography. There is nothing that I would change, or I can think of changing. There's nothing that I. Like, I hope not. I won five Oscars. I well, think they nailed well, it. Sometimes, well, sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, you know, eh, I could, you could do that different or to that different. But, you know, this is one of those movies where I truly think that it deserves the title of masterpiece because there is nothing that you could do differently that would make it better or worse, that would diminish it. Like, you know, sure. the genuine fear mm -hmm. of when she's saving him to the interactions they have to the people being played by Hannibal the entire time to the fear and the cops when Hannibal escapes to how he escapes really just kind of made this movie perfect and they didn't have to go over the top with the special effects or anything in this at most they had was there special effects and most um like with the the makeup, makeup and the body okay, yeah. like i'm thinking, set, I'm I thinking guess, of to uh, a degree yeah. like and yeah the, the, not on the car so the one and the one thing it does show too is no explosions you know that buffalo bill was not an intelligent serial killer he was almost and he was an obsessive serial killer with not an ego, but just a demented viewpoint. Because if he really wanted to, he could have killed Starling when he put the night vision on. But he wanted to do it with his bare hands, it looked it felt like. And then he took the gun out, and then he, you know, then he, was, he couldn't decide how he wanted to do it. He was coveting her. He was coveting her, exactly. Which goes to prove how deranged he is. Because... If that was Hannibal Lecter in that situation, she wouldn't have, you know, made it. He probably would have just pulled the trigger and been done with it. And he would have chewed through her neck. Yeah, you're right. Well, is that true? Yeah. Well, because no. he clearly isn't the type of person to kill someone quickly it, or like just oh okay they're dead. Well, he beat the guy. He clearly it. savers. Yeah, but he could have like kills. he might have been able to. I don't know. Now I'm giving him superpowers, but he might have bit her neck to snap her spine. He might have. And get a little nibble. I don't know about that. I don't think that's But you possible. have to. I, 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 I feel like it is possible. What are you, a vampire? But you have no, to remember. It's, it's not hard to break his spine. What actually happened in the movie when he bit the guy in the face? The guy lived. <laughs> Ruined. Well, it scared the shit out of him and he fell to the floor. But what did it do to the other guy who didn't even attack yet? He was pissing his pants and just didn't, couldn't get the handcuffs off, even yes. though he had the keys. Because he's a monster. Yes. He also, had a gun. So, he also had a gun on him, too. He did not have a gun on him. They both had guns. They did not. He did not have a gun. I looked at They didn't have a gun, like, drawn. No, they had, they had guns on them. No, there was, there was something on his belt here, but it did not look like a gun. Well, one of them clearly Because why would you walk into his cage and risk that getting taken? We see him pass off the wooden baton because we don't want to risk him getting it. Yes. So, I don't think he has a gun. But the guy going in doesn't have a gun. That's what but I'm saying. Tim Burton, the other guy yes. whom he bites, Correct. Uh, has the gun. Yes. I know they were talking about how many bullets. The guy that got handcuffed did not have a gun. They were I thought the cops, when they went up to this, the floor to his floor he was on, they were talking about the bullets. They, they looked at his handgun to see 
and it was his handgun had been fired one time. So they said over the radio he they he might have hit Hannibal. Hmm. Oh. Which is weird because I feel like there's two or three gunshots. Yeah, right. There was. You know what? We found our thing to change. I mean, clearly he had more than enough time to orchestrate that whole thing beautifully because he killed the guy, killed the other guy, cut his face off, did the angel thing, set everything up, placed the body on top of the elevator, all this stuff. Like, clearly, I mean, you know, he is actually like. So it seems like he called the elevator up and then maybe propped the doors open, sent the elevator down, dropped the body on top, then went and laid down as they all ran upstairs. Correct. Right. So yeah, he had plenty of time. Because he didn't have to call the elevator until he was done. Interesting. I don't know. I'm, I don't have much else to add to this discussion, actually. Um, I did just really enjoy this movie, so thank you to our Patreon. I feel like they've written enough about this movie. To select this. Man. This is honestly one of the greats. Um, and thank you very much. You guys have anything else you want to say? I'm just going to say, the let, you know, just put it out there. If you wanted to see uh, an a equally fucked up movie... Have you ever seen Zodiac? So, is that the Zodiac killer? Yeah. I know about I know about real life serial killers because when I used to get bored, I used to look them up on Wikipedia and deep dive on those type of things. Okay. Zodiac killer was one of them. I knew more about the Gardens, uh, sorry, the Golden State killer, especially because he was found during our time a couple years ago. Huh. But is Zodiac Killer was the guy who... It's Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz? Yeah. Oh, my God. We can't... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. We are the 73 Review Crew. I'm Mikey. I'm Joe. And I'm Mike. And thank you very much once again to our Patreon viewers for selecting this movie. If you do enjoy this movie and you want to watch it in full length, head on to our, our Patreon. Or if you want to be part of the group of people who get to decide what we watch for movies, make sure you do check out our Patreon. It has a $1 tier, which helps decide movies. It helps us a long way. It also lets us know what you want to want us to watch because we have movie surveys out every couple months and it does help us figure out yeah what, what's I, I feel like you already know what movie you want to watch next or that you're hoping to vote for and you'll it's find out animal i don't actually i don't know about that i need a little bit of happiness after this one <laughs> uh but thank you very much guys make sure to do comment you know if you're a part of this reaction if there's anything that we predicted that you thought you we never would predict for example was I feel like they don't really give you much room. We got one prediction, though, I feel like, in this movie. Um, I mean, uh, the, the one you got that was really good was both of you were like, it's Hannibal on the floor, and you were like, he's wearing the other guy's face as a mask. Yeah. So, Is yeah. That, was that a reference in the office to that scene? There's so yes. many references to this movie. It, yes. So, yeah, sure. I'm going to say if you're thinking it, yeah. All right, guys, bye. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> bye. Toodaloo.